Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you into the weekend. It is August 30th, I believe. Um, this is the, the last August episode of Wake Up Missoula. We'll be back next Friday to talk some more stuff. I got a lot of stuff I got to talk about. I got some city council stuff where they're talking about um, all sorts of things from updating the TED based on the... Uh, a place called home Missoula living arrangement that's uh, being updated with uh, the city of Missoula as things are changing with high density uh, units being built. They're updating the TEDs to help reflect that. I'll talk a little bit about that, about that later. I got Renee uh, Labrie Shanks uh, here to talk about uh, um, SMP programs, and we'll learn more about that a little bit later. So, but first, I want to kick it off with a little bit of weather, and I'm going to jump right into some of the news items that are happening in and around the world today. It's currently 40, 59 degrees outside. You have 40% chances of ha showers with a high of 83, a low of 53. Um, sunny Saturday, you are, it's a perfect time to get out and about this weekend as it is Labor Day weekend. Uh, many of the other uh, places, especially uh, Florida, Georgia areas, will be seeing quite the interesting storm. Hurricane Dorian will be passing through um, Florida and Georgia sometime at the tail end of Labor Day weekend. Um, it's a Category 4 storm. Um, it's bringing up winds to 130 miles per hour by Monday and Tuesday. is bound to hit the U.S. It is slow but intense and will only increase as it hits land um, at the tail end of the three week three-day weekend. In state news, Montana schools have been hacked and are continuing to be hacked unless Montana officials do something to beef up cybersecurity. In 2017, a hack that initially targeted Columbia Falls ensnared, ensnared several nearby districts with, when hackers used access to launch a campaign to dis disturbingly personalize threats and canceled school for days. The same year, hackers started to wipe out all data from Forsyth public schools if a ransom was not paid. School systems tend to be a little more lax when, it, when certain information information such as passwords and access to f for computers. For instance, uh, I was shared a password and username for uh, uh, sports live uh, streaming that's going to be happening tonight on MCAT. But uh, most of the email says, please don't forget this password as we will not record passwords anywhere in their system. The uh, Montana Public Safety Commission does not look into cybersecurity as they look into public utilities in Montana and do not regulate internet in the state. Superintendent of Public Schools, Elsie uh, Armentson, said that the, that training teachers about cybersecurity is important as schools don't always have the money for top-notch security systems. In local news, there is a very interesting development in sexual assault cases. According to General uh, Attorney General Tim Fox, a rape kit will have the uh, uh, ability to give updates to victims of sexual assault as they go through the process. Uh, this is a way for healthcare workers to stay in contact with law enforcement agencies as these kits will go through the proper channels. Um, Fox created the Sexual Assault Eviden Evidence Tax Force in 2015 to study the issue of untested evidence kits. Montana received money for, tracking the tra for the tracking system in 2016 and $2 million to process about 1,200 untested rape kits. This new process will launch September 1st, which will allow victims to sign up for notifications of where their kits are currently. And uh, let's see. A lot of other things happening as well. Uh, international news, uh, they had the G7 uh, sum summit, and uh, um, many of the countries made an offer of $20 million in aid to the Brazilian Amazon as the forest fires are happening. Uh, President uh, Jair Barcelona, a uh, climate change skeptic, has faced criticism over policies and has delayed response to the fires. Um, he... he he, before he accepts any kind of money, he requires an apology from Pre French President Emmanuel Macron for his 20% claim that the Amazon rainforest produces 20% of the world's oxygen. So that's where we're at right now. I'm just kind of breezing through the uh, news, and that's kind of what's going on in there. You can find out more information in PR. It's pretty much all over the news. Um, but without further ado, I have an art clip for you guys, and this is the last time I'll be able to play this art clip from the Gallery of the Visual Arts, and it's at the Social Science Building at the University of Montana. But when I come back, I'm going to have Renee on talking about uh, Medicare.
everybody. Welcome back. I'm here with Renee uh, Lavrie Shanks, and yep. you're you're, with, you're you you are the SMP program manager. What is SMP? Thanks for asking. That is Senior Medicare Patrol. It's uh, an acronym that we use instead. So Montana SMP is part of a national network. It's in every state and U.S. protectorate. And we are a program of Missoula Aging Services, which, as you know, our mission is to promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. Nice. So uh, many of the programs that are happening this year, this is particularly uh, kind of like a change time because you were talking about how people, this is like the time for people to change their Medicare plan and their prescriptions, all that stuff. Yes, we're, we're concerned with the fraud happening around these enrollment periods. So the annual election period is coming up October 7th through December 15th. That's a one time a year somebody on Medicare Part C or D can change into any plan they want and relook at their plans. And we really recommend they do that. Only be, not because of fraud, but because the changes happen, drugs get added or dropped or everything like that. They just need to know what it'll look like next year before January 1st rolls around. Right, and uh, primarily uh, the biggest scams are over the phone and usually when they ask um, personal information. Even if this is like, you're in a secured line, but your information may not be secured based on the person you're talking to. It's a new world with the phone, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, between the between the robocalls, but the unsolicited calls, the telemarketers, and they're just, and texts. They're texting yeah. Oh, too. yeah. Yeah, and they're spoofing numbers, so it'll look like a different number, yep. so it'll look like a Montana number, and it's not. And the recommendation is always, one, if you can, just don't answer the phone unless you know who it is. Right. That we always say it's, it's important, they'll leave a message. Two is, if you do answer the phone, if it seems like, who is this person, why are they calling me, just hang up right away. You don't want to be on the phone any longer than you need to because they track that. Right. And they, they track that and they can sell your information to other companies. They say, this person was on for 10 minutes. That makes your number more cashable to them than somebody who doesn't answer or is only on for 30 seconds. Right. And then the third thing is never give out personal information, anything like your full birth date, even your don't rec they have a way with con artists, right? Yeah. That they, they make it seem like they gave the info, but you're actually giving them info. It's amazing. Yep. But don't give them out social security, of course. And two people in Montana that I know of across the state did a couple weeks Ooh. ago on some of these calls that came in. Yeah, I mean, I don't even trust uh, putting my uh, own card information when I'm paying over the phone and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times it's, it's good um, to really uh, vet your calls. Like, if you don't recognize the number, just don't answer it. It's, it's as simple as possible. Most phones are retrofitted with caller ID and whatnot. So mm -hmm. if they leave a message, then it's good. Then you should know exactly what they're going for. But another thing that I always uh, that I figured out as well, because I was also one with uh, who's constantly bombarded with robot calls. It's always that one. So it was like three times a day around the same time every day and whatnot. And the one thing that I noticed is that um, if you automatically hit ignore, that would automatically know that they would keep calling. Oh, hitting ignore is another big problem as well. You a lot of times you just gotta let it ring out. Yep. It marks you as a live line. Yep. And when they yeah, they have a live line and they know it's a live line, they're gonna keep you on that rotation. So if people quit answering them, they will slowly drop off. Yep. They need to enter their number in the do not call. I know people think, oh that doesn't stop the calls. No, but you will be guaranteed to know and have a red flag when somebody does call and you are registered yeah. on that. And I always like to think of it as a weed you should not pull because if you pull this particular weed, three more weeds pop into place and it gets even worse. Yes. So you gotta watch out for those kind of calls. That is true. Yep. So besides that, let's talk about more of the, uh, you know, some of the scams. You were saying that there's uh, genetic test kits, you know, that, that yeah. does not require a salesman to uh, get these. Yeah, genetic testing kits right now are, are one of the current scams nationwide, but they've hit Montana. I've heard people answer Facebook posts, um, that people get a phone call or people go to a presentation and even get something in the mail and, and it, they say, you know, they get onto your fear and they get over your lot, your sense of logic and they say, if, you know, your cancer runs in your family, we can help identify it early, something like that. And then you're thinking, well, why not? Medicare covers it. But Medicare only covers genetic testing in certain circumstances. Your doctor has to order it. It's got to be medically necessary. It's got to be a reason. So if you think about those terms and somebody's no. telling you, don't worry about it, I can get Medicare to cover it, that's not a good sign right there. Right. If Just you walk want, away. If you want to pay for the genetic kit, you pay for it yourself and you send it in yourself, but you never have that middleman to help you get that genetic kit. 
Plus, who knows what, they have your genetic information right. now. <laughs> I don't even know what's going to happen right. with that down the road. Yeah, information is such, like, we live in a world where every bit of information about us, even, like, us going on internet is constantly being tracked. Mm -hmm. And But now it's like, now it's being worn. It's like, your information may be used for right. purposes. And right, right. Yeah, so, um, but let, let's talk a little bit more, you know, like, we're talking about the scams and all that stuff, like, but let's talk about more about, uh, you know, the Medicare enrollment, uh, C&D plans, about that's what's happening, and uh, Missoula Agent Services is working hard to help people uh, get the information and tools they need to uh, change, adapt, evolve their Medicare plan. Yes, uh, last year we had a lot of people uh, get a plan move so all of those people had to switch into a new plan and it is complicated and we want people to know if they need help get an appointment with Missoula Aging Services or their closest office on aging you know if they're a caregiver for someone across the state there are ship counselors all across the state it's a good network and we give unbiased information and we want people to just have the information to make the decision right. and this year is another big year because not only is it the annual election period but we have a new tool that Medicare is unrolling basically October 1st so it'll be brand new to all of us to help people make these decisions so folks who have done it themselves in the past go online with medicare.gov it's going to look different this year and so if they run into any snags with that to also give us a call to help troubleshoot Cool. And speaking of websites, you have your own website, MissoulaAgentServices.org. Yes. If you are interested in finding more information, go to this website. And uh, what's the number for Missoula Agent Services? 728-7682. Awesome. Well, is there anything else you want to say about anything that we didn't touch on? Because we really like dove into the scams for sure. We did. I just want people to be aware that durable medical equipment scams are rampant right now, the genetic testing, and uh, not being afraid if the Social Security or the IRS is calling you because they're not. They're just not. And that's the main, the main thing. And then to call us if they, if they have questions. Nice. Well, uh, thanks, Renee. I, I really appreciate you coming down here. Um, like again, like once again, if you are interested in more information, you can uh, look up Missoula Aging Services. They're here to help the aging population that is Missoula or any other aging services that are in your community as well. All right, so thanks. And, Thank you. Um, we'll be right back right after this. Montana works a lot on, along the Rocky Mountain Front, East of Glacier, on coexistence. They work a lot on making the world a friendlier place with, um, in communities surrounding um, the parks. And uh, Johnny R. Lee and I were visiting about the, the tribes are working a lot, the Salish Kootenai and the Blackfeet. Um, there, there's a lot of effort going on. So the question that some of us have is, why aren't we harvesting the lessons of coexistence and spreading them out to places like the Upper Green River in Wyoming, which is a big mortality sink right now near Pinedale, um, which needs some help with the livestock conflicts. Um, why According to the World Health Organization, these are 2006 statistics, one quarter of deaths globally are secondary to modifiable environmental risk factors. One third of childhood deaths and 88% of diarrheal illnesses, as well as 42% of all causes of malaria and 95% of the cases of de dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, are all directly or indirectly related to modifiable environmental factors. So this is not a small problem that we're talking about. If we're talking about one quarter of all the people in the world who die, die due to environmental issues, that's not a little, little issue that we're, uh, and a little thing that we're talking about. And uh, going from one side of that small hell spot to the other, trying to find weather or trying to find air to breathe since the wind kept shifting from one side to the other and we were lying down uh, 
looking for scraping the ashes away, looking for bare dirt. And with the five gun water can, it provided us with the uh, means to wet handkerchiefs or shirts or whatever to breathe through. And that uh, acted, of course, as a filter and kept a lot of the ash uh, out of our lungs. Uh, and th after that, the next thing I remember is the helicopter. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. I just wanted to say that so those are some of the programs that we air on MCAT. Um, we're going to be start airing some of the sports uh, programs on Sundays. So uh, some of the past years uh, uh, we've filmed sports through uh, MCPS High School and we're be, we air those sports usually on Sunday nights as a replay. But as uh, the sports season comes into f full fruition, uh, the football game happening tonight between Big Sky and West uh, Billings West um, will be happening tonight. Um, we'll be live streaming it on our Facebook page and only our Facebook page. Uh, we uh, do plan on doing it, trying to do a live broadcast on sometime in late September. So look out for that on uh, your local programming. Also go to MCAT.org for more information about that. I'll bring up the website. Um, here's the website, MCAT.org. You can find out everything you need to know what's happening on our channel and more. If you're interested in getting in contact with us, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. It is a wonderful resource for everything local, and it's just a it's just a, such a, it's just a, such a great website. All right, <laughs> uh, moving on. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for pre-critic shoojum. Uh, welcome to the kind of movie where your pain can be reversed. In this, don't let her go. Uh, stars a man who ca gets a chance to bring his family back by staying in contact with his niece. He thinks he goes mad, but it's actually true. So it's it's like one of those movies. Just like, am I going crazy or am I not? But then you know, if you look at the uh, genre, it's a fantasy, so it's obviously real but fake in the movie. Anyways, but the synopsis says that he's. Uh, He's in the fantasy, but also it's a murder mystery thriller where his family gets murdered, but uh, including his niece, and she's also on the phone, but she's dead. How can this be? So anyway, she talks on the phone. It's kind of like that movie Frequency with Dennis Quaid and the guy who played Jesus. Moving on to the next film, it's uh, this is another movie that you probably never heard of, and you know why not? There's not many movies actually coming out this late in Labor Day weekend. Before you know it. You'll be watching this film called Before You Know It. It's a comedy about sisters who find out their dead mama is actually alive. But not only that, she's an actor. Ugh. But not only that, she's a soap opera actor. Ugh. And uh, <laughs> uh, so watch this over-the-top terrible comedy, which, you know, it doesn't seem like it's a comedy. kind of seems like this mother has a lot of problems because it's like she likes drama so much she pretends to be dead. And you know how soap operas are. It's like, I thought you were dead. It's like, no, it was my evil twin sister, blah, blah, blah. So that's the movie what's happening uh, this weekend as well. Um... Last and uh, definitely least, and probably something you'll probably never, never, ever hear of or be in theaters, um, Saho. It's an action film with a philosophy, and here's the synopsis excerpt for you. It challenges the perception of who is the hunter and who is the hunted. It blends a thrilling story with commercial elements, commercial elements <laughs> of storytelling to deliver high-octane action entertainer appealing to all segments of the audience. So audience are segmented. And uh, certain segments were like this movie. So there you go. Wow. Woo. Who? Saho. That's ho. Anyways, that's the movies that are coming out this weekend. I have a bunch of short films that are uh, not, not necessarily short films. They're, it's kind of like the experience. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a video that I posted on our, uh, Missoula's Community Media Resources Facebook page. Um, and this is from uh, the Kids Visits, the Boys and Girls Club, which is a great after-school program for a lot of kids who are looking for a place to go after school. Uh, they usually go to the Christian Life Center. I believe it's the place across from the YMC YMCA, which is also a great after school uh, program for a lot of kids who want to go to a place after school um, but flagship will be starting eventually uh, it'll be start by the end of September so you'll be seeing a lot more flagship Fridays as we go into the rest of the season but we're not going to see any anytime soon so we still have the um, the we're still going to burn out some of the uh, summer series uh, for the rest of September so without further ado here's a boys and girls club highlights from the studio <laughs> This is Boys and Girls Club. My name is Hayden. My name is Zachary. 
Brooklyn's not on the screen. <laughs> so you should go to the screen. Be in the screen. She's hiding in the corner of the screen. We're in the kitchen. We're in a house. Uh, we are in a house. And you're weaving a house. We're on the bus. And you're the bus. going on to the school bus. Okay. So today, um, the weather is going to be raining this afternoon. Weather system. We're back. I'm Jasper. Of course, we know your name. So this is black and white. Very there's nice buildings here in the olden days. Here comes out. There's somebody uh, watch out, Brooklyn. Man. There's and somebody the, walking this behind. is a some sort of person. <coughs> that got this shot is black and white, cat. so there's nothing wrong. California when I went to uh, go uh, see my grandma. Okay, how guess what guys? Okay. Guess what? Go I heard that. something in the carnival that <laughs> that pigs are, pigs are now eating cats. Apparently, look at this! Oh my God! It says pigs are eating cats. <laughs> I got it! <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! Oh hi guys! I'm back and um. You mean we're back? The pi they're it's on not just pigs. It's all, all the animals. animals. We're just gonna react to a bunch of different things. There's, there's people. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Um, that's not it. I'm. This is my. I'm Tom. I'm Jimmy. And I'm Timmy. Oh, I forgot our clipboard. <laughs> Good morning, Missoula. Er. Yeah. Uh, can we not say that? Yeah. Submit your cat videos, guys. Yeah. Submit them now. It's great. Um, it's great, man. You should try it out. It gives you Help one. Us win. Yeah. Stop clapping now. No. Stop clapping now. No. Not until Jack starts. He will win. Cows are nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's move over to our green screen cast. The old people are having a meeting. Just say stuff. They're not ready. There's, it's okay, it's okay. So guys, how are you guys here? My name is Brooke. My name is Darcy. And, and this, this is Funny too. We had people falling down. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought theirs was funnier. Well, we had fun seeing you guys. So it's nice to be here. Bye. 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 Okay. <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> now to the green. Goodbye. This is our first time doing this, and we're kind of scared, so don't judge us. <laughs> it's a little smoky, as you can see. Um, there's been some fires up in the north. And oh, look at there. Very um, beautiful sun. She got so Yeah, I face. wonder why that got there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, McDonald's. Go just, on, Bella. Just picture this. A delicious crispy buns <laughs> with a medium rare patty and delicious looking melted cheese. And then there's pickles, onions, and tomatoes on top. This is Ryder, by the way, and he needs a cookie. Get a play. No. Bubble. No. <laughs> this is politics that is anyway. very inappropriate. Someone got hit by a train. This just in. Someone. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're back to our regular scheduled program of 
talking about some other stuff. And now that we're in the middle of the show, I like to talk about some city council stuff. Hooray! Time for the city council report. First and foremost is a proclamation. And it's part of the muscular dystrophy proclamation run by Mayor John Ingen, where they're going to be talking about some of the firefighters who will be stopping traffic off the bridges in Missoula to get some money to help fight muscular dystrophy. Whereas, ladies and gentlemen, the Muscular Dystrophy, Dystrophy Association, MDA, of Montana supports local families that are living with muscular dystrophy, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, and other neuromuscular diseases. And whereas 2019 marks the 65th year firefighters have been filling the boot with MDA, and whereas through fundraising efforts of firefighters and fire departments through the Fill the Boot program, MDA has been able to uh, fund groundbreaking research resulting in life-saving treatments for individuals living with neuromuscular diseases. And whereas Fill the Boot is a proud tradition between the International Association of Firefighters and MDA, now therefore I, John Ingen, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the state of Montana, hereby rec recognize the seventh day of September 2019 as MDA Day in Missoula and call upon the community to help our city of Missoula and Missoula rural firefighters fill the boot for MDA and you really can't get across a bridge without doing so so we look forward to that and thanks to the firefighters who get out every year and hold out the boot and we should do that more often revenue stream I like <laughs> all right so that was uh, mayor John Ingham um, you know, support the uh, muscular, mis uh, muscular dystrophy associa uh, association. Um, that was just kind of like a snippet. This is a short meeting overall, but the biggest thing that happened during the city council meeting was the animal control update on an ordinance called Animal Ordinance, which is perfect for International Dog Day, which happened just this past Monday. Uh, Mr. Dara, I didn't, they didn't uh, mention his first name, but he's, he's with Animal Control, and this is what he had to say, uh, what's going on, and why they're changing an animal ordinance. came to us from the city attorney's office. Uh, it, it was the result of an animal cruelty case that we had, and um, the city attorney's office uh, thought we could do a little better job by amending, amending the current Ordinance. So uh, we'd like to have you consider an ordinance to amend the Missoula Municipal Code Title VI, Chapter 6.07, entitled Animal Ordinance, to clarify the following. An animal welfare hearing, the municipal court has the authority to order the surrender of an animal in cases of abuse or neglect or where the owner is not able or willing to provide the necessary care of the animal. That was the portion that wasn't wasn't real clear. So th what they wanted to do is that they wanted to close some of the loopholes and determine who necessarily paid for the animal's welfare while the uh, former owner uh, is going through the process. Because a lot of these cases take about a year to get processed of animal cruelty. Um, this is a result of uh, abuse in neglected animals, but the city wanted to update the ordinance to... Uh, have some of the details of abuse and neglected filled in. Uh, this comes at the time when dog, when there was a dog who is 25 pounds, where the average weight should be between 35 and 65 pounds of this particular medium-sized dog. While the uh, s small dogs, in particular, if you have a really small dog, they're usually under 20 pounds, and that usually determines the category between medium, large, and small dogs. So. Uh, Mr. Dara, he talks about uh, details pertaining to surrender of the dog by court order, and this is what he had to say about that. Um, when we seize an animal, we have a hearing to decide what the fate of the animal would be, and the person can post bond, they can forfeit the animal, the animal may have to be euthanized, but this is where we had to clean, clean up some of the language. So right here uh, at the hearing, the court shall consider the extent of the animal's disease, injury, neglect, or suffering, and shall no more than five days after the hearing determine whether the animal will be, one, released to the respondent, and then two, held and cared for by county or by the city county animal shelter pending disposition of the criminal proceeding. This is the one that uh, the city attorney's office added at the time the judge would at least have the authority to surrender the animal to the city county animal shelter due to abuse or neglect. All right, so uh, that was some of the things that they want to help clarify. Some of the dogs um, just help clearing that up. Um, sometimes dogs uh, do have to put, be put down based on assessments of animal control after the fact. Most of these updates are based on laws by the city's attorney's office and not the city of Missoula. Animal control will hold the animal and or 
a vet for further assessments. Uh, part of this is the fact that in criminal cases, uh, could last up to a year and the animal has to have a place to stay, which means they have to be fed and it usually costs associated with the animal being in um, those places. Uh, who retains the dog while the owner is going through the court system because um, they might be neglecting uh, the dog um, and they might forfeit the dog, but they still have to go through the proceedings, which takes quite a while to do so as well because there's not many laws that protect animals. And it's unclear if the owner has to pay for the cost associated with keeping the dog at the animal control area. I guess it depends upon the uh, judge's uh, ruling in, in terms of this. Um, these are considered criminal cases. Um, Stacey Anderson also reflects on this animal ordinance update as well. Um, I think that abuse of animals is one of the highest sins, and I can't help to notice that today is International Dog Day, so I appreciate that we are discussing this and um, wish that there were more that we could do. So. All right. So um, uh, most of these ordinances, uh, um, one of the things that uh, Ted Nugent, uh, Jim Nugent from the city attorney uh, has said that is that many ordinances that are through the city of Missoula are, are have nothing to do with jail time. Ordinances cannot put you in jail. Ordinance can only fine you. And that's one of the things that uh, this animal ordinance update is trying to deal with. Um, sorry, I have to restate that because you won't see jail time through an ordinance. That's this the main point of this. And so they're just trying to figure out what happens with the dog and basically being able to take away the dog from neglected and abuse. And of course, that was basically kind of like the, the meat of the city council meeting. You can watch the city council meeting anytime going through MCAT.org and the city of Missoula's website. And I'll talk a little bit about that after I get through public works. Public Works traffic speed limit change for the cement school area expressway. The city of Missoula has uh, annexed a portion of the airport boulevard expressway areas, and so they want to adjust the speed limit. Uh, Murta Bersera, city council member, is proponent in ha ma having this happen in Missoula. Small. It's an elementary school, so we have small children walking with their parents or biking to school, and they are doing so alongside traffic that's moving. Um, you know, at high speeds to, that feel like high speeds to them, um, a lot of truck traffic. And as we all know, that's an area, the industrial, the development park um, is growing. So we're only going to see an increase in um, this type of traffic. So I, I think it would be appropriate for us to um, work with our public works uh, department to see about a a traffic study in the, in the interim that we afford this school the same safety uh, measures that we have um, to all the other schools in our, in our community. Uh, many uh, examples of uh, using um, uh, traffic calming areas as well is a prime example is Russell's, Russell School. Um, the street right there usually has a, a speed limit about 35, which they're trying to adjust to uh, lower it down to about 25. There's so many places there. You got Boys and Girls Club, you got YMCA, you got a park nearby, you even got Russell School. So the city was really working with that. But a lot of times the street and roads, especially Russell, just off of uh, Highway 93, it b belongs to Montana Department of Transportation. So this is the part of one of the things that since they annexed this particular area, then now they're able to change the speed limit to help improve these areas uh, in terms of making it safer for school children. Uh, so development services are planning to hire a traffic engineer who will look into this. Uh, recently, the 2020 f fiscal year budget has expanded funds for streets in Missoula, which uh, be go beyond uh, what snow plows and pothole fillers is. So a traffic engineer will do these speed test studies, but this won't happen until 2020. So th on the first of the year, these kind of speed studies will happen. And um, Brian Von Lusberg is not too happy about how long this process uh, will be taking in the future. Regardless of that, this is an area where I would be fully comfortable pushing. Um, I just, uh, and, and I appreciate the, the regs around it, but to be governed by the existing speed when we're trying to achieve a safety aim is backwards. But 
seems on track to do what we need to do, at least. All right. So as the slow wheels of government uh, keep on turning, we'll go on to our next segment, which is the big one. It's TED. It's a three-hour meeting, but I'm not only going to give you the cliff notes of most of the meeting, which honestly, if you watch the first 20 minutes, you get the whole kind of idea of what they're trying to improve on. Uh, John DeBarry talks about making it easier without giving up design standards Missoula has put into place with their new design standards called A Place Called Home. So without further ado, here is uh, John DeBarry's opening on this. Our hope was to, through having both a clear set of TED regulations and a clear set of subdivision regulations, that we were able to um, have those things be complementary to each other because it seems like that that's a good marriage, that there's an opportunity through a combination of subdivision and townhome exemption development to get the development that we'd like to see in the community. So, All right. So one of the things that they wanted to do is that they wanted to expand on some of the unit requirements. Uh, Benjamin Brewer, uh, Devel Developmental Service, talks us more about TED and their problems, and this is what he had to say. I think anyone uh, disagrees with that there is um, a problem here. Uh, development through TED has brought up inconsistencies in the regulations uh, that has pushed the city into a continually reactive um, uh, position, which put in other ways, by allowing for a high level of flexibility, um, it's led to a high level of uncertainty. Uh, there have been challenges to what level of authority is provided through TED. Um, there, uh, as review for large TED projects move to requiring a conditional use approval, there have been challenges in receiving and being able to require the information needed to make decisions. There are a variety of issues that have come up uh, when TED projects are on constrained lands, and in some cases the city has stood to lose important connections or design considerations for developments that would have, would have otherwise been received through subdivision. All right. so. Um, more of what some of the things of the challenges that faced was the uh, many, I mean, the biggest thing with TEDs is that giant 64 unit TED project up Hillview Way. Uh, of course, here's a little bit of history. Hillview Way has been known for uh, a lot of slow movements, a lot of uh, development, and the, the more recent one is that was a SID that helped improve the Hillview Way. It's that, that curved road that goes up beyond Russell Street. Um, everything's connected in Missoula. It's it's interesting how, like, in my own mind, it's everything's making a lot of connections with Russell and their school. But the Hillview Way, they uh, they updated the road. It was a huge project, different stages. It was like it was uphill, but it also slants. So the road had to be, it cost quite a bit of money for this to happen. And this idea is it's a special district. So the people who live in that particular district would pay for it. But unfortunately, not too many people actually lived in that area. But there are a lot of landowners who are up in arms in this particular area, which took another six to eight months to do with some of their lawyers uh, during this process, which had uh, basically said is like, all right, if you guys plan to develop on these sites you're the landowners you don't have to pay but if you do develop on these sites you will have to pay the taxes that are owed to the SID so that's a whole another process in and in itself of uh, something that they for taxing future owners for this development of the 64 units that they want to build on there with a three-phase project it's a major pr uh, process that they're working on here as well and uh, and also not only that, you know, TEDs kind of have been overlooked for some time now, and many other places have been overlooked. Moving on to uh, m flash forward to Verizon Store. Uh, this is the kind of the inciting incident in Missoula, which laid work for the overlay of design standards that Missoula sees today to improve the areas in which uh, to prevent any kind of uh, reactive issues. The biggest thing that the Verizon Store did was the neon lights, which they rectified. I just want to put that into uh, in a quote. Uh, so it's a little, uh, but of course, more recently with a little dose of a geological survey of the site, uh, you're building on a hillside. Um, there's just so much going on. Yeah, it, the, the, it, I've been with this process for quite some time, and I have never not talked about U of U A. But of course, uh, here's Benjamin again. He talks about how the city can avoid legal and safety problems by not streamlining these projects that TEDs allow. And this is what he had to say. Well, actually, wait, that's not it. Let me find that quote. There it is. It's important to recognize the, the need for these amendments um, and, the, and the 
reasons for bringing on the interim ordinance um, were not a response to a single project or based on a single issue. It's been cumulative over the years and is just as much based on projects that have been <clears throat> proposed to development services for future development as those that are in existence now. And uh, we recognize that greenfield development is important to addressing housing supply. And we've included a path that enables TED to be used in greenfield areas. But we are proposing that TED is best suited for promoting housing supply through small to medium sized urban infill projects. And we see that type of development as playing um, an important role in creating future supply over the coming years. We've worked to create a balanced package of amendments that creates a clear, predictable, and consistent administrative process that will help alleviate our housing affordability problem while not losing sight of the many other issues uh, that Missoulians have expressed through the development of the growth policy and other plans um, and such um, that are important to maintaining community values. All right, so that was uh, Benjamin once again talking uh, more in length about how this is uh that they want to ease up on the fast development while at the same time being able to develop on the high demand. Um, the the whole idea is that the ever-growing city of Missoula wants to improve uh, the uh, quality, but of course the, the quantity should never uh, outweigh the, qu uh, the quality of some of these designs that are happening. Um, most of this meeting is pretty much summed up in the first 20 minutes of what they want to do. Uh, basically, what they want to do is with TED's um, units that ranging from 10 to 20 will now be able to be 15 to 30 units on uh, half an acre. Um, if, if they are able to rec rezone to top of these projects. So uh, one of the things that they wanted for uh, the uh, developers to do is work on rezoning some of these areas along with uh, development. And so with that, they get incentivized by having an additional 150% of units. So let's say you have uh, 20 units, uh, you want to be able to do an additional, so you'll have 30 units in the end if you match these zoning requirements. Um, so in a lot of ways, uh, the, some of the issues that may come up is if you have a 100 unit complex, it could be up to 150 unit uh, complex with the uh, with the uh, incentive as well. So uh, Jason Ryson, uh, the man behind the 64 unit Hillview Way project, uh, kind of reflects on his process through the city of Missoula. Uh, when you read the state law, it says, you know, hey, you can use this tool when you comply with title, you know, with your zoning, and in our case, it's Title 20. When you read the intent of zoning and what you're supposed to consider, you know, health, human welfare, you know, it's all written in your guys' packet. Um, we ought not be so afraid of them. Um, you know, a lot of these projects have been out for the last three amendments that we've done to this. And so I think there's a lot of things we can do. Um, subdivision process in state law gives us little flexibility to provide the housing that we need. And the TED process gives us lots of flexibility. So as we're going through the rules and rushing through them, as it appears, um, maybe we ought to think about the fact that what we've laid out in front of us, and that's why we ad added the administrative review, that yes, to get something that's administratively reviewed, I get it. Limit the number of units, that kind of stuff. It feels like maybe there should be a phase two of this process that gets us back into something that's not the CUP because it hasn't been working, um, but perhaps something else that gets us to the next level that lets us use the process and provides housing in an efficient and um, meaningful way. Um, so we do have flexibility in TEDs. Um, so um, I do support that and I really am encouraged that we're looking towards getting the subdivisions clean, uh, rules cleaned up. I also look forward to potentially maybe having some collaboration where the city and the builders and the realtors can come up with something that would make the state laws more workable for municipalities where there is a little bit more intentional um, zoning and thought and planning. Um, because I believe that subdivision review being so detailed via state's mandate has put a crutch on us. We are using that as a way to not put in place full comprehensive zoning that includes infrastructure as a unified code. And we go to our other communities in Montana like Billings and they have that. Long term goal, we should be working towards that. All right, so uh, that was Jason Ryson about that. Um, uh, let's see. He is also aware that the city is doling on one issue, while other uh, complexes with hundreds of units being built have little to no feedback from the community, like 
Uh, many issues that uh, many cities face in general are the changes in neighborhoods. Sometimes you get a home that are built on properties that are all matched development wise and then boom a recession hits and a lot of what times what they need to do is have more affordable housing right there but as soon as the uh, the housing market starts to improve after the fact uh, you start to realize that the the houses, uh, the, the smaller houses that were made for cheap are pretty much coming up to the same prices as the your houses were back in the day. And a lot of the bigger houses are going up to $350,000, $400,000 for houses that were worth $250,000 five, 10 years ago. So it's, uh, you know, I definitely, it's very interesting where uh, housing prices go up and the, and the houses that were already too expensive are raised up because biologic standards, bigger should automatically be more worth more of course i'm gonna have to stop here because i have three pages of city council under my belt so far and i just want to give you a taste of some of the things that the city is working with in terms of larger density living to combat high demand and po populations while at the same time uh, working with the design standards to help improve uh, the blighted areas that are in the city of missoula as they're going it forward with many of these affordable housing projects all right ted Land use and planning. You can check out this meeting by going onto the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website and wonderful resource for everything that you guys need to know about what's happening within the city of Missoula. It is a great resource for anybody who is interested in seeing what the city is doing, what they plan to do, and some of the upcoming meetings as well. It's as simple as going to <gasps> government, going under city council right here. Right here, I click on Agendas Webcast Minutes. It brings you to this wonderful, wonderful page. And they give you the most recent uh, meetings from the top to bottom. So you have uh, Open Space Advisory me Meeting. Land use and planning is right here from Wednesday the 28th. Uh, just, a, uh, just a little uh, word to the wise for um, most of you city council followers like myself. Um, uh, Mondays are the city council meetings. And uh, uh, Wednesdays are the committee meetings where the, it's all the stuff that they need you need to flush out before they get into the approval on Monday's meetings and most approvals of ordinance or anything like that usually take about 30 days to for approval for any changes unless it's considered an emergency ordinance so there's a little lesson for you guys as well if you guys are interested in w wake up missoula you can log on to wake up missoula.wixsite.com slash wake up missoula so nice we made you write it out twice if you are interested in finding out more about mcat you can go to mcat.org once again mcat provides a sort of resource for anybody c off the street who is interested in uh, media projects we have cameras we got equipment, we got studio space, and we got some wonderful things. All you, do, 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 all you need to do is just come on down and learn all about us and more. All right, so I have an, a video for you guys, and this is a Dublin stuff. It's from the, the movie Suddenly with uh, Frank Sinatra. All right, moving on. Uh, here's this, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about some events that are happening this weekend. So stay with me. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. What's the big eyed officer? Good to see you. I see you like this new fancy doorbell that well, I got. We all can't be upper middle class like you, so. Oh, nonsense. Social Security pays for this. <laughs> what do I owe the visit? Well, I got a noise complaint for your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in now. You remember my darling daughter, Cynthia? Oh, and her son, Bobby J? This is uh, some guy. He's awesome. He doesn't seem that awesome. <laughs> well, now, kids say the darndest things. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> Hello there. I don't want any trouble. Oh yeah. No. Ah! Oh no! I've been shot. Oh no! You killed him. <laughs> you guys are so mean. Mhm. Mm That's right. Now I just gotta walk over here. Nope. But nope. But nope. But nope. But nope. But nope. Let's see what we got here. Trains, trains, more trains. Uh, seems okay. Now let me make this clear, old Tama. You did a good job, but wasn't good enough. I wanted to do this nice and smooth, you see? Kicking the gun. Let's check things out. You're a bully. Uh, yeah, he, he's dead. Just uh, wrap him up in this blanket, put him over there. You don't seem like you got a plan. I got a plan. Mom, 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 wake up, mom, wake up. This now is you're not listening the time here, to son. They ain't got a good time to talk to your mommy right now. You can kiss my grits. This is the house of Jesus Christ. No swearing. I swear. I never quite took you for a religious man, father. 
Oh, woo wee! Well, what are you gonna do with us, huh? First things first, I'm gonna stay out this unconscious woman right now. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. She's in REM sleep, so she seems fine. All right, guys, I want you to gather up and move somewhere and uh, do things. You got it? Oh, you got to do no. it. Do, yeah, do what I say. I, I'm in charge. Mm. I, uh, I'm a guy with a bunch of guns with other guys. Uh, I mean, a bunch of guys with, other, with guns. So you want to listen to me because I'm in charge. <laughs> and remember, when you're playing paper, rock, scissors, always pick gun. Gun wins every single time. You got that? Now I'm going to go over here. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. Kicking things off is all your indoor gym stuff. It's raining today, maybe. 40% chance of rain. Who knows? It's uh, It was cloudy all day yesterday. Probably a mixture of some clouds and some of the smoke that was coming in from Idaho. Uh, they had some prescribed burns in Idaho. So uh, the last couple of days have been kind of a little bit smoky, but not too bad, except for that one day. Um, but it wasn't as thick as it was like it was last year. Indoor gym stuff. Miserable Gymnastics, Root Tiger Sports Center. You got... Uh, uh, flying squirrel. Boom. You got all sorts of indoor sports fun stuff for a lot of kids who want to stay inside. But school is starting. Um, most kids are in school all day and yesterday. Um, but let's talk about some things that are happening here. You have some kids who are in preschool, uh, some kids who are not in school right now. Tiny Tales and Storytime is a great way for kids to get into books and learning. Every Friday, Missoula Public Library hosts Tiny Tales and Storytime. Dragon Rug or the and the larger meeting room starting at 10.30 a.m. Hands-on Science, Squid Dissection, opening at 11 a.m., but uh, going on until 5 p.m. They got all sorts of things at the Spectrum Discovery Center. Learn about the incredible anatomy of squids as they dissect them at the Discovery Bench today. Uh, blood Drive at the YMCA starting at 12.30. Uh, donors may be registered at uh, redcrossblood.org and into the sponsor code YMCA Missoula for some benefits. Um, Red Free Red Cross a tote bag for all donors while supplies last. Um, visit redcrossblood.org. Um, you can call them to schedule your appointment at 1-800-733-2767 to schedule your appointment. Open hours in the makerspace at Missoula Public Library starting at 1 p.m. This is from 1 to 6 p.m. This is a good way to uh, get in, um, uh, start projects. They have a 3D printer there at the Missoula Public Library. It's a great opportunity along with their teen writers group, which happens after school today at 3.30. It's, you know, every Friday from 3.30 to 5.30. Are you a teen writer who needs a little inspiration and or feedback? Come to the Teen Writers Group and let your inner artist flourish. Meaning places vary, but the young adult library on duty will know where to send you. UMD Chef's Garden uh, Dinner, South Southern Hospitality, Iron Grizz, American Bistro, Description, UM Dining Executive Chief Brian Hedelson welcomes to the South Avenue Garden to explore true Southern hospitality. Chef Hedelson was, uh, has created a Southern-themed dinner which da uh, with dazzling guests, complete with appetizers, wine pairings, and a tour of the garden. This extraordinary El Fresco meal with emphasis fundamentals connections of dining with friends, old and new, breaking bread together in a garden among crops, bursting with life and flavor, the breathtaking backdrop of Mount Sentinel's familiar slope. And you can get tickets at UM Dining events.com but this is happening at 6 p.m. at the UM uh, you, you know where the uh, the bear is you basically you go to right in front of where the uh, bear which uh, you know I want to say that celebrating 50 years they just had a 50 year uh, birthday of the incarnation of that uh, copper bear or iron bear that's in front of uh, the oval you go to that thing you look to your right and that particular area in is where they're gonna have the southern hospitality dining night Outdoor Cinema is happening Friday night, not Saturday night this weekend. Uh, it's starting at 15, 8, 15, Missoula Head Start Schoolyard. Nor, uh, North, North Missoula Community Development Corporation presents Missoula Outdoor Cinema. Join us Friday, October 30th for, for Moana. And it usually starts at 8.15 p.m., but it might start just a little bit later, just a word to the wise. And they usually start at sunset. All right, so I have an article for you guys, and this is at the Missouri Museum, and it will be going on until first Friday of next week, so you have one more week to check this out, and when I come back, I'll talk about your weekend events.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about your weekend events. There's not much time in the rest of the show. If you guys are uh, planning on uh, going out and about at the farmer's market from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every single Saturday until late October, uh, they have a tree tour of uh, trees of the fossil record. University of Montana is showing you all sorts of the uh, uh, different types of trees that were planted. And you get a tour starting at 11 a.m. at The Root, just north of the main hall. Missouri Osprey versus Idaho Falls, uh, Chuckars. Uh, it's at Oregon Park at Allegiance Film. It starts at 7 p.m. And that's uh, not much else is going on on your Saturday as well. Uh, they have a couple other things. Uh, markets, Puzzle Club at the uh, Black, Black Hat Bakery Shop, Mizzou Indoor Sports Arena is doing some things as well. Um, stargazing at the Payne Family Native American Center starting at 10 a.m. So all those stuff and more. And you can enjoy all that stuff uh, by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, MissoulaEvents.net. It is a wonderful resource for everything Missoula and beyond. And once again, if you're interested in finding out more about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you right out twice. We have all sorts of sources of everything that you need to know what's happening in and around uh, Missoula. And it's just fun videos from videos made here in Missoula. Along with going on to our MCAT.org webpage, you can watch all our programs and stuff that you see right here from our video on demand by going on to watch. 189 and 190, but at the same time, you can always watch our channel on Charter uh, uh, Spectrum, and the uh, the television channel is 189 to 190. All right, so without further ado, I want to say thank you for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. I just made it just in a matter of time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.